<clears throat> uh, good morning. This is Professor Shukra again. And this session is about large groups, teaching in large groups, commonly known as lectures. And this corresponds to chapter 15 of my book on medical education. So let's start it. Before I start, there are certain characteristics which promote learning if they are present in the students and the teacher. Number one, active participation. Number two, face-to-face -face interaction. Number three, Come prepared for the session, so one is focused on it. Some time should be given to the students so they can reflect and think what is being taught and discussed. Now, as you can see this thing, as the number of students increases, these characteristics are compromised and this compromise results in less learning. Large group. What number constitutes a large group? Is a mode of discussion. Some say more than 100, others may say more than 30, some say more than 50. Possibly X and X. He has they have proposed a categorization in which they propose more than 50 is a large group. But Although as I was telling this thing, that the characteristics of which promote learning like interactivity, like active learning, that is compromised in large group. But new techniques, new methods are available when this can be lessened. So therefore, an interactive lecture is much better than a traditional lecture. And interactivity can be created now with the use of the new technology like audio response systems, like there's so many ways now that can be used. At this point of time, there is no role of non-interactive large group teaching. It is a thing of past. A large group teaching has to be interactive. So must there are three things which are must for a lecture. Content, understanding and motivation. What three things? Content, understanding and motivation. What's the reason? You see, if the content is not covered, which is required to achieve an instructional learning objective, then the students will have incomplete knowledge if the content is not covered. Understanding. If students do not understand the topic, who does not understand the information, they will memorize, become surface learners, and be unable to solve the problems. Very important. A very one of the reasons by which we promote surface learners are if understanding is not happening in a teaching session. I think this is very important. An uninterested, not motivated, not enthusiastic teacher makes students in turn uninterested, not motivated, and not enthusiastic to learn. Lecturers' enthusiasm for the subject motivates the students. If lecturer has a low expectation of his class, that will be evident in their teaching style also. So therefore, if you are coming to deliver a lecture which is interactive, obviously, then it should cover the content. If there is a lot of content, must you know must be covered. Make sure there is understanding and you should be motivated, you should be enthusiastic, and you should be imparting positive energy into the students, giving them hope, 
raising their self-efficacy, raising their self-esteem. There is somebody, this I wrote myself, principles of teaching in large group, I think important are gain attention, maintain attention, teach must you know, teach slowly, teach repeatedly, teach by making links. Repeat with me, gain attention, maintain attention, teach must to know, teach slowly, teach repeatedly, teach by making links. If you remember only these six rules, and you may not be aware of educational theories and principles in the jargon of medical education, this is sufficient for you to become an excellent teacher which when teaches the students learn because all these rules which I have derived, principle I have derived, they have been derived from four paradigms, four orientations of educational theories which are behaviorism, cognitivism, constructivism and social constructivism and humanistic. You see, as there is a structure of small groups, there is a structure of a large group also. There is always the beginning of the lecture, there is middle of the lecture, end. Quite commonly, everyone will tell you, there is a beginning in the lecture, there is a middle in the lecture, and there is end in the lecture. Tell them what you want to say, say, tell them what you have said. Very famous quotations, often repeatedly quoted, but there is a wisdom behind that. We read Ghana's events of instructions or conditions of instructions that if those conditions are present in any lesson, then learning is optimized. They are gain attention for state learning outcome. Activate prior knowledge, present stimulus, guide teaching, elicit performance, give feedback, and once they have learned, assess them and they provide the opportunity for transfer of knowledge in different contexts. One can correlate them with beginning, middle, and end. If you think of beginning, Tell them what you want to say. It includes even one gain attention and even two state outcomes of Ghana's nine events of instructions or nine conditions of instructions. Say that includes even three stimulate record of prior knowledge, four, even four, present stimulus material, even five, provide learning guidance. And includes even six illicit performance, seven provide feedback on the performance. These all things are present, isn't it? Since we are talking about lecture, and this methodology is very important to teach knowledge domain of learning. And whenever I'm teaching knowledge domain of learning, the knowledge consists of either facts, concepts, and principles. Facts are statements of information which can be which are recalled usually. Concepts are words which are defined in concepts, there are similarities which are explained. Examples are explained to understand and principles are if and then relationships in which which can predict the behavior. So therefore, after gaining attention and stating outcomes, once you are teaching facts, concepts and principles, then in lesson designing, you should have decided before coming giving lecture what facts you are going to tell then which concepts you are going to teach and then which concept you are going to teach on the previous concepts and from there what generalizations, 
what principles you want to teach and the people to discover. This all is done and not only this, if you want to teach a concept, then teach concept by a known method of teaching which are rule example or definition example and vice versa and obviously there should be always an opportunity of reflection they could think they should have opportunity to initiate problem you can ask questions to them they should have answer to you and then you're giving them feedback to crack their schemas now what to do once you're coming for a lecture there are certain things which are done just before the lecture then during the lecture then after the lecture much just before the lecture you plan how to do the lecture which i was talking about the previous slide which is the lesson planning now lesson planning is done you have a blueprint in front of you how you are going to process you already know okay this is the way i am going to gain attention this is the the learning outcomes which i am going to tell them okay this is the how i am going to stimulate the recall okay these are the facts principles and concepts which i am going to teach and this is the method which i am going to choose and then to assess performance these are the questions i am going to ask and this is the way i am to do and going to feedback that has already been decided just before the lecture arrive early if the lecture is at 9 please do not arrive at the lecture hall at 9 arrive at least 5 to 10 minutes before test the multimedia there is a murphy's law something can go wrong if you think something go wrong many times you find out that the multimedia is causing problem so therefore must check the multimedia and you should become familiar with the audio reader aids which are available there consider where you will stand so you must know and decide where you going to stand to give the lecture in such a way that it does not hide the screen and you can see everyone also you should be able to see you should be able to see the watch in the lecture hall so that you know how much time is spent most important now because nowadays people are not wearing wrist watches during the lecture capture students attention let the students know how when the questions will be handled ground rules students should know beforehand okay what method you are going to use when questions are going to be asked and how they are going to be asked one method could be you may say okay after every three sides i am going to take a break or after teaching you a concept i am going to take a break and ask you questions or you can say i am going to allow questions in the end because there is a chance during the discourse you might find the answers yourself so whatever it is that is to be decided then anybody who wants to answer should raise the hand no time plan to the actual times before coming in lesson planning you have made a time plan now you should be constantly aware looking at the watch then are you going according to that or you're not going ensure you finish on time include time for short evaluation that is i was talking about is last after the lecture excuse me 